Hey, it's John Reed, JDOD.com. Look at these handsome folks from ASUG News. They dress so nice, I had to put on a jacket. How's it going? Thomas and Courtney. John, thank you for having us here. And Dennis, too, thank you as well. We're excited to be here and appreciate the, uh, the invite. We're honored to be here. Yeah, you're just going to need to hold the mic up a little higher for me. Just mimic what I do and you'll be good. So you guys have been around for 20 months. What a lot of people don't know is you actually do create your own content. It's not being piped to you from some mysterious ASUG pipe in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We, uh, we were tasked with being an independent news site, and we've kept that. We cre you know, create all our content. We get all our ideas uh, from, our, from our members. We'll, we'll talk to them, get ideas, and then we'll go out and report the stories, track other members down, track influencers down to get them and speak to them about the, you know, today's top issues. I think we're starting to hit our stride in terms of getting some good enterprise stories up there after 20 months, and you'll see more of that going forward. Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of us of blogs and then those deep customer pieces that we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a lot more of those as we go forward. I feel like we're about season three or four of Seinfeld right now. We're really starting to hit our stride. I'm glad you mentioned the deep customer pieces because I'm counting on you guys to really represent for customers because the thing is that, okay, so we've heard this big tech keynote we heard yesterday, which kind of presented an evolved vision of HANA and platform. And that's great. And technology is cool. And SAP is trying to do right by their customers. But we got to put this through the customer sense test. So what kind of reactions are you getting? So customers definitely understand the vision now. I don't think there's any problem with understanding that HANA is a database and that HANA can also be used as a data mart and the sort of roadmap there. And I wouldn't say that customers aren't excited about it. The customers I've spoken with at the show definitely express interest in HANA. Whether or not that's immediate interest uh, is definitely the question. Uh, several people said to me, this really doesn't become real until it's applied to the business suite, which, you know, Vishal Sika said yesterday during the executive Q&A that that wasn't far off, but the, the, that very, really isn't all that specific. Mm -hmm. He also said, you know, the measure of its success is going to be whether smaller customers can, can take advantage of this particular technology. And that is still quite a ways off. The smaller customers still really can't see and extrapolate the value that they're going to get out of this in-memory investment. I think, too, there's a, a little bit of a wait-and-see approach being taken now. Some of the customers, they're, as Cordy said, they're excited about it, but... They've got to see more proven case studies. They've got to see the business value. I think one of the areas where you see that a lot, we just came back from the SAP Business Objects user conference, and you see a lot in that in going to Ford Auto. You know, a lot of the business objects customers, they're waiting and seeing. They want to see, um, you know, what's going to shake out in Ford Out 1. They're really waiting to see that. So uh, I think you'll see that with HANA. I, I also, one, I had a in really interesting conversation with one guy about the HANA in the cloud, and he thought they had already made an investment in HANA on-premise, and the cloud was very intriguing to them, and he kind of thought maybe, wow, maybe we could have waited a little bit and maybe done some more work there. So there's a lot of stuff that they've got to, you know, wait and see, sift through, and then figure out what they're going to do. And there are a lot of challenges still on the back end of things in terms of trying to get the architecture in a state that it needs to be in to, to even be able to leverage a HANA. Now, Thomas, I've been tracking you, stalking you a little bit in these QA sessions, and I've seen you've been banging on SAP executives about integration. And I want to know, what, what's the fuss with integration? Is our clouds not sexy enough with you? You have to ask about the plumbing? Well, again, I'll go back to what I hear from ASUG members, is that uh, the integration challenges don't go away with the cl within the cloud. I mean, I know SAP is trying to attack this, but it's still a challenge. And I think, you know, since the cloud really took off in businesses, maybe three year, four year, five years ago, we're starting to see some of those uh, integration silos coming up in the cloud. And so there's some frustration there. So is it fair to say that NetWeaver never achieved its dream of state-of-the-art systems integration? No comment. Okay, then. Cordy, do you have anything to add? Save me here. Of course. <laughs> so, you know, there's NetWeaver is still very much behind the scenes of these products, particularly Yesterday, we had a, a briefing on HANA integration. And um, 
I'm not going to get the name of this right, but it's called something like SAP HANA NetWeaver Integration Services for the Cloud or something. Wow. Um, I think that's NITWIT, if, if I remember the acronym yeah, correctly. Yeah, NITWIT. <laughs> that's great. Um, but very much behind the scenes here, uh, customers are going to be able to leverage investments they've made in NetWeaver PI. Um, NetWeaver PI on demand is behind these services. That's what they're billing it as. Um, so I don't think that NetWeaver, NetWeaver shouldn't get a bad rap. It's, okay. It's definitely, okay. um, NetWeaver's okay. It's done its thing. It's yeah. done its job. It's done its job. And it's still behind the cloud, NetWeaver Cloud, so they're still calling it NetWeaver, right. so that's something there. All right, give us some, uh, some last words for the folks that weren't able to be here this year. What, what, if you weren't here on the ground, what was, tell me one thing that you would have missed. Besides you asking Bill McDermott about his sex appeal. I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, that's a travesty, by the way, 43rd ranking. Um, I, the, it's interesting to be in these, some of these sessions and talking to the real... Uh, it's amazing how talking to real-life people actually is really helpful. And, and, I, and I just find when walking around, HANA is so pervasive now. It, it's on everyone. Everyone I talk to today, I say, what, what are you here for? What are you interested in? HANA. So SAP has that buzz that they finally wanted for so long with HANA. Now comes the really hard part. They got to get more people. As Dennis asked yesterday, you know, 600 implementations, is that good enough? Bill said we need to do better. So I think they, they really need to get more, more of those case studies out there. Um, so that's, that's, I mean, that's not shocking that HANA, but it's just amazing how many people are talking about it. Last yeah, words? There's nothing like these SAP events. And, you know, last night we were sitting with Josh Greenbaum at the Demo Jam, and he remarked on just how different this vendor is from any other show that, that, that you go to, particularly um, with all the SAP mentors getting up on stage and, and the excitement around that. You can't get that through the web. You know, you can't get that online. And the best thing about these events is, is really coming here and networking and, and seeing people and learning new things. By the way, I think 11-year-old kids losing Demo Jam is going to be looked back on like good fellows not winning the Oscar. But that's a whole other story. Anyway, we got to wrap this one. This is ASUG News Does Vegas. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us.